Today I'm going to teach you guys some really, really valuable and crazy lessons about graffiti. Stuff I haven't really ever talked about here on the channel before. And we're going to be doing that, checking out the work of Nico, somebody that one of you guys recommended. You guys always, always knock it out of the park with the recommendations. So if you want me to check out one of your favorite graffiti artists, leave them in the comments down below. And always remember, I got a link to these people in the description down below as well. Show them some love because they really do have beautiful work. And once again, today we're going to be checking out how exactly it is they flow their letters because they go about it in what I believe to be a very unique way. So check out this very first piece. Absolutely beautiful color combinations with the blue and green. One of my favorites in all honesty. This is going to be the piece that we go ahead and check out. But if you can't read graffiti, then here's the letters for you. You got the N, the E, K, O, S. And one of the first things that really sticks out to me about this piece right here is how they go ahead and flow the N with the other letters. Notice how the N is very rigid. It's very hard. It's got a lot of straight lines, a lot of harsh edges. As for the E, is a little bit softer. Sure, don't get me wrong, it certainly has its fair share of sharp, pointy edges as well in areas like this right here, for example, as well as other areas like that and the point over here. But there's no denying the fact that it certainly has a lot more rounded features as well, which we see throughout the entire E. And Nikos does a beautiful job at flowing these two letters together. Let's focus right here just for a second, where we have the N shoot straight up in this direction. Now this gives us a little bit of line similarity, which definitely helps to bump flow up just a little bit. But it also just creates a nice triangular form right here between these extensions. And then this, of course, has uniformity with these lines right here that go throughout the E. But they also take this a step further. They kind of base their exterior detail around these harsher, more angular lines, right? We see that right over here as this line kind of goes right through, as well as many more throughout the entire piece. This helps out immensely for flowing things, despite the fact that it is a very small detail. If we were to get rid of that, while the piece wouldn't be destroyed or anything, don't get me wrong, it certainly would be missing something. Now these two dominant angles are present throughout the entire piece here, where we have once again that top part of the N, and then the exterior detail that completely reflects that, and it continues through the bottom of the N and in other areas like this, but it also goes once again right back to that exterior detail that shoots all the way up here. And this line is reflected and helps flow with this line of the S. Now these are some pretty dominant lines here as, you know, given their size, they're pretty huge, they're pretty hard to miss, but these lines right here are linked together in a really genius way through right here on the K. And this also works the other way around as well. So you'll see that same kind of flow in the opposite direction with these angles right here. And granted, it's not utilized as much. It doesn't have to be because of how much flow he's already built with these larger angles going in the opposite first direction we spoke about. So if you're a more advanced graffiti artist, I highly recommend giving this a try. Try to use your exterior details in order to help things flow. That's one of the big powers behind exterior details. Exterior details are not only great for filling in negative space, which he doesn't do too much with these angled lines, but they're also great for adding flow. And that's something that we don't see enough of in graffiti, admittedly. Th this really is a great utility of exterior details. Before we get into the next piece, today's video is sponsored by, well, my own books. I created a whole series of books for you guys that jump starts you into getting into basic pieces. Now these books can be bought individually or in a bundle, and essentially you're going to learn how to make a basic letter structure, as well as a couple of techniques that you can go ahead and apply to your basic pieces. Things like drop shadow, basic 3D, one point perspective, as well as real realistic shading. I got that in the description down below if you want to go ahead and check those out, but let's move into the next piece here. Here's the letters for those of you guys who might be newer to graffiti, and we're once again seeing the same exact thing with flow, where he's going ahead and flowing some more circular letters with these really harsher lines. Let's focus a little bit more on that this time instead of focusing on the exterior details. The great thing about rounded lines in pretty much any art form is they're very adaptable. You can pretty much take a rounded line and make it flow with just about anything you want it to flow with, and you can do it very easily as well if you know what you're doing and you know how to kind of mess with things just a little bit. So let's check out how he's got this very straight N, right? How does this flow exactly with something a lot more rounded like the E? For the E, we're going to focus on this portion right here, as well as this portion right here. Two very rounded areas in very prominent spots for the letter E. So in order to go ahead and flow that, they start off in a very interesting way, and that's with this extension right over here. You see how it kind of comes on over this way to a vertical line right there? This right here is going to be really important because it allows for them to go ahead and add the vertical spot on the back of the E right there and allows these two lines to flow. Now you might see that and you go, oh, well, that's really inconsequential. That's not really the biggest dedication to flow, right? But look at how many times they amplify this flow, right? You have this part of the extension that shoots down into here, giving us more of that verticality and giving more value to this line right here as now it has more of a presence. But not only that, they slice in right here for another vertical line and then they do it again over here. They're really amplifying that verticality and making sure that it has more 
leverage to flow with. So now we have this line right here. That's established a pretty good amount of flow. It also maintains the letter structure of the E and looks like it fits right in with the rest of these vertical lines on the end. So it doesn't look like too much of a difference there. It fits right in with the surrounding area. They're able to then go ahead and take that vertical line and swing it in a very smooth circular motion right over here. Now here's what I love about circular lines in any art form is the fact because it's circular, any one of these points can flow with any straight line that goes in the same exact direction. So say for example, we had a straight line that went this way. Well, this straight line would flow with those two red lines underneath it. But if we had a straight line that went this way, you'd see once again that the straight line lines up with a couple of more dots. And once again, the same thing right over here. And that's the power of circular lines, is that any point on that circular line, you can flow it with a straight line some way, somehow, if you kind of bridge them a little bit closer together. That creates what's known as a shared edge tangent. And it's at that point that you'd receive flow. We actually see this a little bit later in his piece right over here, where the straight part of the O and the circular part of the S end up meeting right here, which create a shared edge tangent, which increases flow. The only time a straight line would not flow with a rounded line in the way that I'm describing here is if the straight line is literally intersecting with that more rounded line, which is something that we actually see right here in the bottom portion of the E and this line and this line and this line. All of those intersect with that rounded line and as a result, they don't really flow with that part of the E. Rather, instead, what happens with this rounded part is this rounded part of the E ends up building up a little bit of momentum in order to shift the flow's direction into this direction instead. And that's where the power comes from. Because now if we look at this line, we can see that once again, he's got another straight line, which helps flow. He's got this straight line, which helps flow. And he's got this one, which helps flow, which he then carries right over there. And of course, you can always link that right back here as well. So this is always a nice, consistent pattern with this piece here, where he goes ahead and establishes a certain direction and then follows that direction with various lines throughout the entire piece, whether it's from interior detail or letter structure itself in the case of this piece specifically. Also, something I really like in this piece is how he actually segments the K a little bit as this would be the actual arm of the K. The arm of the K really shoots out to the right here in a way that's not really typical of the arm for the K. But he gives us a little bit of verticality right here, adds a tiny, tiny chip right there, and then swings the E's letter structure all the way up and then ends it in a vertical way right there in order to once again help the flow between those two lines. He carries this out throughout the star as well, which gives us a little bit more verticality, and he carries it throughout the extension over here as well, which once again helps out. And notice it's no coincidence that he has another extension that shoots right on in this direction, once again giving us a little bit more verticality in order to help flow. Then he has a little bit of a cutout right in here as well. Once again, no coincidence there because that helps to bridge the gap in flow as well. If you're a little bit more advanced in graffiti, try to go ahead and link your flow with little things like this. If you're going to have an extension, think about how it's aiding your flow. That's of course if flow is something that you're struggling with or if it's something that you want to mess around with. If you're newer to graffiti and you have a firm understanding of letter structure, then just try to focus flowing your letters by using that shared edge tangent. That's a great way in order to build up flow in a very easy manner that's pretty risk-free. And if you're brand new to graffiti, well then keep it simple, practice basics, basic print font, hand styles, and straight letters. Next up we got this Sitem piece, I believe is how it's pronounced. Forgive me if I'm butchering these words. My apologies. You can see the letters right there. Now here I want to talk to you guys about something that happens a lot in graffiti, and if you're not careful, you can completely destroy your piece doing what they did here. And a lot of graffiti artists actually do destroy their pieces doing this. So I think it's pretty worth going through this piece in order to kind of show you guys the dangers and what to expect when you go for something like this. So what exactly am I talking about? Well, we're talking about distorting a letter's structure or lowering its significance for the sake of style. Let's check this out. We already saw that the S is right here. We already saw that the I is right here and the T is right there. But if you notice, the I's structure is really meek. It's really soft. It's not as prominent as the other three letters here, which drastically lessens its flow. Not only that, it also lessens the letter name weight of the piece, and it's all because of a distorted structure due to an extension here. And on top of that, it also has a distorted structure because the T is very intrusive in the I's space. So let's talk about how this works. How exactly is he making this I function? And what's the utility behind all of this? Well, for starters, when we check out the I, it still has the majority of its lowercase structure intact. And the deviation with the letter distortion is not so drastic to the point where it completely alters the letter structure. And if anything, they can always use the excuse that this is technically the tittle. Although that'd be a pretty unnecessary justification for this, it still works out. So we found out that the letter distortion is not super drastic in order to actually completely demolish the I's structure. So really what we're dealing with here, the big negative side effect is the fact that it's really tiny, really small, especially comparatively speaking to everything else. Well, luckily for them, they keep a really tight negative space 
case management between the entire piece as a whole. Not only between individual letters, as you can see here and here, but also once again within the individual letter itself. So things like open counters don't have all that much negative space as well. This really helps the piece to look like more so one cohesive shape as opposed to individual letters that come together to make one cohesive word. So that definitely helps out a lot. There's also not all too much negative space around the eye, which definitely helps out because had there been more negative space around the eye, then the lack of weight in this area would be really, really noticeable and very drastic. Sometimes negative space can actually build up weight, and in this case, that's never given the opportunity to do that. So due to the amount of positive space here, it really helps the eye mitigate the lack of weight that it has. But on top of all of that, they make sure to let the eye play a pivotal role in flow, and they make sure to make the lack of the eye's structure play a role in flow as well. What do I mean by this? So if the eye were to have its full structure, let's say we had a tittle up here, for example, then the T would have struggled in order to come out all the way over here. And as a result, it would have struggled to flow with this part of the S. And because it never would have reached all the way over here, it would not have been able to build up the momentum that it builds up right over here into this direction. And this is all very important for the letter T and for the piece altogether. Because this flows so prominently with the S and because this really does build quite a bit of momentum going into this direction, we're able to actually build up momentum starting from over here. And when that momentum starts, it shoots on over, it comes on down and shoots right into the letter M that then comes down over here. So you have all this flow at the expense of a tiny little eye. I personally love the way that they handled that name, right? I thought the way that they went about that was really genius and very unorthodox. This goes right back to the beginning of the video where I said they have a very weird way about flowing things and it works. Like it definitely, definitely works. Check out this next piece right here. Here are the letters and here's the entire piece. See if you can go and spot a lot of the same lessons that we previously talked about in this piece right here. Now while you guys go ahead and do that, something I really want to talk about that they do very differently here is they actually do a lot of drawn through lines. Now drawn through lines is pretty much a technique that you use in all art forms in order to go ahead and make sure that you're proportioning things properly, you're measuring things properly, things line up where they're supposed to be. But in graffiti it's really used a lot in order to suggest letter structure or just straight up show letter structure through another letter. And that's something they do a ton of right here in this piece. And I like the way they pulled it off. But what I really like that they do is they use values as well as lines in order to differentiate letter structure and in order to differentiate important pieces of letter structure as well. So we have the end shoot through the E right in here and you can see that the E definitely goes on top of the N right through that area but simply just drawing the letter N through the E wasn't enough right they wanted to go ahead and change things up a little bit and we could see that here that they don't, they don't actually have a proper line there rather instead they shade the structure of the N and suggest its letter structure there. They also stop using this value right in this area throughout this space of the E which helps build contrast and visually differentiate those pieces of the letter structure. They do this also really well on the KO combo where you see the K shoots through here and the O shoots through there and you can see that not all of the K and not all of the O is actually a definitive line. As to where you have a definitive outline in these areas and a definitive outline in these areas and this area right here, you no longer have a definitive outline right here or here. Rather instead what you have is a shift of colors and value. And those go a long way in order to once again differentiate the letter structure. So technically they only really outlined this much of their O. If you were to just draw an O like that and you were to quite literally blatantly cover the rest of the O in a normal piece without defining the letter structure, what you would end up with is a destroyed letter O. You would have distorted the structure and we wouldn't be able to see all of the lower half of the O, right? All of that would be gone, meaning the O would be destroyed. So this suggestion of structure works great in order to build letter structure where you wouldn't be able to do otherwise. And this allows you to mess with negative space management and letter name positioning in a way that you once again wouldn't be able to do otherwise. Because now they're able to have the O right on top of the K in this area. As to where if they were not going to suggest structure the way that they did right there, the O would be forced to be higher up or the K would be forced to be lower down. And as you can see that either messes with letter structure in this case of the K or it messes with letter name positioning in the case of the O being higher. And both of those would end up messing with negative space management and as a result mess with flow so on and so forth. So drawing through in areas like this is a great way to go ahead and mess with pretty much all of the fundamentals. But dudes that pretty much wraps up today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys learned something. If you have any questions about the topic feel free to leave it in the comments down below and don't forget you can also leave your favorite graffiti artists down there for future breakdowns and videos like this. And feel free to check out the best how to do graffiti playlist right up here with more graffiti content right here on the bottom. Also before we go a little bit of an update for you guys. We've officially started writing the very next book in the series. It's going to be all about how style functions. It's going to be a complete and total breakdown of style in every single art form imaginable. I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully you guys are going to enjoy that book. I I'm really really
really excited for it. Once again, thank you for watching. I'll catch you guys back here next week.